rockin' around the Christmas tree at the Christmas party hop. channel I am Amelia and today we're going to be talking about an amazing sermon that I heard last night from my youth group and I wanted to pass it on to you guys and I wanted to give you guys this information in hopes that the Holy Spirit will work through you with this message that I'm about to share so a little backstory last night I went to youth group and I just brought this little piece of paper and I was like, oh, I'll take notes. I brought a little pen. I was like, I'll, it'll be fun. I'll just, you know, just in case something good really happens. I am so thankful. I like to think that the Holy Spirit compelled me to do that because of what he said was just amazing and impeccable. But um, I just feel so blessed that I did this. I literally just took a whole page of notes about this and I wanted to share this with you guys about what my youth pastor said. So let's get right on into it. So he started off in Genesis and we're doing this Christmas like session, not session, but like series, that's the word. We're doing a Christmas series called He is Home to, this week was the first week. And then he moved on to talk about even Adam a little bit more about how they brought sin to the world, about how they must have felt. And then he said exactly what I was thinking and he said, you guys must be thinking, oh, why am I talking about Genesis? We're talking about Christmas time. But let me explain to you something that he moved on. Christmas started at Adam and Eve. Christmas started there because Eve brought sin into the world so God could bring his one and only son to save us and prove to us that he cannot be beaten, he cannot be defeated. It all started with Adam and Eve. That just is insane to me that I never thought the beginning of that they were setting up for this. Like in Isaiah, Isaiah the prophet preaches about this guy who's gonna come and save them from their sins. And I never knew it started with Adam and Eve. I never made that connection. You might have made that connection, but Personally, I didn't, and I was like, well, it was, it was insane. Okay, so he moves on to say that the first people that, the, that he sent angels to, like, to tell that the king is here, is the shepherds. Which I was like, yeah, I know that. I've read the Christmas story. I know those things. But then he said, talked about how the shepherds were, like, the worst job. Everyone says shepherds are the worst. Oh my goodness, shepherds like literally have the worst job ever. Shepherds are so wor like the worst, basically. And God chose, basically shepherds are the lowest, which I'm trying to say. So God chose the lowest and he chose them and then everyone else to show that the shepherds and the kings are one. We're all made in God's image. No matter how much money we have, no matter how much some of us may get privileges, no matter how much less privileges some of us may have, we all are made in God's image and we all are unique and different, but we all come from him, from one father. We all are so different, but we all come from one father, which is insane. and. Just something I feel like everyone needs to be reminded. Not all of us, I don't know your home situation right now. I don't know how many parents you have, but not all of us have a home even. There are some people that don't even have a home. Which is crazy to think about, but Jesus welcomes you into his home and Jesus is home. Jesus, I bet, I hope, every one of you has felt home in one way or another and that is Jesus Jesus is home he's the comfort of knowing he's the comfort of sleeping in your own bed he's those kind of feelings are Jesus Jesus is home and he welcomes you home he not just is it he's like oh I guess I have to welcome this person home no he welcomes you and he is 
you're home. So that's why basically it was called he is home because he is home. He's those feelings, those warm, fuzzy feelings when we're sleeping in our own bed or hanging out with our own family or whatever it is you correlate correlate or correspond to home, it's him. Okay, so I wrote down here, I'm going to read exactly what I wrote. I said, Jesus came to tell me, there is a king on my side who made the universe. Jesus wants to bring me home. Which, I don't think that needs an explanation. Jesus wants me to be in eternal life with him. If I mess up or fail, he's not like, oh, okay, now I can make another spot for a different person. I don't have to worry about her. Whew, that's off my chest. He wants us to be in eternal life with him. That's why he's always there for us. That's why he loves us unconditionally. It's because he wants us to be home with him. He wants that for us. And then he brought back Eve and he showed a picture that I about cried to. And I'll put it somewhere here so you can look at this. I don't know if you can tell, but Eve is standing, I don't know what kind of place that one is, but Eve is standing on the left side when I was looking at it. Left side is Eve. And she's looking at Mary, who's pregnant. She's looking at baby Jesus, knowing that there's a hope for the future. She might have messed up, but no, there was a hope. And Eve saw that, and Eve knows that when she looks at Mary in this photo. And that's hope. And if you look closely, I don't know if you can see it, there's like a tree in the photo, I believe. So I don't know if you can actually see it, but Mary is stepping on the serpent that's wrapped around Eve's leg. She is crushing those, those lies, those, that evil. She's crushing it with baby Jesus in her. Those are two incredible women of the Bible that relate to each other and that I never thought would. It is so incredible when I see God work like that in someone or something. The worship songs that we did that night was, well, one of the worship song was Reckless Love. And we went back into worship afterwards and I had been praying before I went and for a while now for this Christmas, you know, play I've talked about it that I'm doing with my church. The, we're doing a nativity scene. And in that scene, my character is supposed to bow down to Jesus and like see Jesus for the first time and be like, this is a savior, like, wow. And I was having a hard time trying to get out of a character, get into me and feel what I would feel in that section. And in that moment, and I sat there, I was like, dear God, I pray that your reckless love will come over me and over these people sitting here. That not all of them might be Christian. Some of them might come and just want to watch a fun Christmas play. And this could be the moment. And I could be do- <coughs> Sorry, the hot chocolate. Um, but I could be doing that. And that felt so much pressure on me. But then in that moment, I raised up my hands and I let him in this moment. And I said, dear God, let your- reckless love come over me and all these people in the crowd. God is just so good. Okay, everyone, that's all I have for today. I'm, this was actually going to, this video is going to correspond with a Bible study plan I have in the making right now for you guys. It is a big hassle and it's 12 days. You can take more or less though with this, whatever you want, work at your own speed. And it's looking at Jesus' life in a whole throughout all the different Gospels. I'm taking pieces of different gospel, Gospels and putting it all into this place. And it starts at Genesis. Genesis 3. At the fall. I really hope you guys are going to enjoy the Bible study. I will do a separate video about that. About basically what the Bible study is, where you can find it. Um, but if I do have it ready by the time I'm posting this video, I will have it linked in below. So check just to make sure that I finish it or maybe I didn't finish it or maybe it's just a rough draft if you want it, just like a Google Docs page if you want that. 
I'll have two different types if you want to customize your own. I'll have a Google Docs blank page. And if you want a pretty, you know, Christmassy one that I'm currently still working on, I will have that link down below as well. Options, people, am I right? So thank you so much for watching. I hope you listen to this and I hope you feel better today about just hearing that truth. And I want to remind you that this is the birth of Jesus. This is, this is an insane time to celebrate. Okay. I'm rambling so much, but thank you so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe because it doesn't cost you anything, but it costs me joy. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.